Hello, my name is Alan Cohen. Today I'll be interviewing Warren Odes, New York City drummer. Drummer extraordinaire, superstar himself. She played on tons of records, Broadway shows, and other areas. I like uh, Warren. Uh, good afternoon. It's good to see you today. Really good to see you. And today, uh, I, I did want to talk about how this is affecting you as a musician, primarily a musician, how the COVID-19 pandemic is really affecting you and your business and everybody around you, your life in general. Hi, Warren. Nice to see you. Hey, Alan. Great. Great. Why, why don't you just give us a little bit of background on, you know, you know, about yourself and your career, you know? Okay. I'll give you the Evelyn Woods. Um, so like most guys of my age, the Beatles, right? Ed Sullivan, we're off to the races. But before then, my father was a jazz fan. So I know this sounds crazy, but Joe Jones used to come out to our house oh. and stay. And sometimes his daughter would stay for two weeks. So I heard that music in my house, Count Basie, Swing. And uh, crazy story even, my father passed away, but Joe was invited to my bar mitzvah and actually brought his trio and played at the bar mitzvah. Wow. That's nuts. Okay, so played in a lot of rock bands as a kid, like everybody. Went to Manhattan School of Music. Great and school. Good, good fortune, I was uh, introduced to Milton who took a liking to me and uh, introduced me to Bernie Layton, the brilliant piano player. And I played in Bernie's group, hmm. which sort of set me into the music business. And from there, uh, it's, you know, there was so much going on then. You know, I worked with Judy Collins for 10 years, Jackie and Roy, Chris Connor, Astrid. Lou Jr. Volpe, that was with Lou. Lou Volpe? With, yeah, with Judy. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. And uh, yeah, we did, we traveled all over the place for a long time. Yeah. So you know Lou, okay. Yeah, yeah. I played Sugar Babies for him. I took it over when he left. King Louie, that's what they call him. Yeah, King what King a Louis. phenomenal guitar player. Unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Amazing. So, um, you know, and then I, uh, I dabbled in the Broadway show thing a little, but I was never really an inside guy there uh, by any means. And then through some weird connection, life is really nuts. You know, Kirk Nurok used to live around the block from me, the piano player, composer. And he was sort of tied into Broadway, and I played in his group. And he uh, he recommended me for a Broadway show, which was uh, Three Musketeers, which only oh, lasted a week. With uh, Glenn Rovin. You, uh, he was the composer, Glenn. Oh, or the conductor. The composer for that. Uh, no, no, Gordon Harrell was the conductor. Oh, Gordon was, okay. But I do know Glenn very well, yeah, of course. And um, Glenn, who I worked with, uh, Raquel Welch with. Yeah, who he passed. I know Glenn. Right. Yeah. yeah. So um, anyhow, Gordon Harrell was the conductor. <clears throat> he took a liking to me. And many years later, I think it was him. I don't really know how, but I was pulled into the loop for um, The Life, Cy Coleman show. Yeah. And that kind of started me into the Broadway world. And that's the mid 90s. And it's been on and off until... Uh, I was just doing King Kong, and that ended in August. All right. And since then, it's been some of this and some of that, and then now we're in the now we're in the plague, you know. So uh, okay. So let let me ask you. Uh, I think the life uh, was Gary Haas on bass on that. Gary was on the bass. Another good friend of mine. Hey, we we know a lot of the same. So all right. So that ended just a little while ago. So then uh, you, you did mention before to me before we went online that you are booked to do a, a show at the Paper Mill Playhouse in New Jersey. Yeah, that was supposed to have uh, was supposed to be running. Now it was supposed to have been started. Uh... Uh, the end of February, beginning of March ish. Yeah. And of course, they keep pushing it away. And the producers, uh, they just feel like they're going to wait till the absolute last second to cancel. Yeah. They don't have to cancel. Well, when is it supposed to open, actually? When was it supposed to? Yeah, you said sometime in April. In April. So now even. I don't even know. I've lost track. So you were going to be in rehearsals. So, of course, you were going to be rehearsing. Obviously, you get paid for rehearsals. You're yeah. part of the local 802 Musicians Union. Yep. You were looking to get paid. Um, you were looking to have a, a, 
a run? How long do those shows usually run? Uh, I think with rehearsals and everything, it's to maybe a five, five or six week uh, commitment. Right. Okay. So, yeah. so you're out of work at this point, pretty much. I'm very out of work. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, really, like I said, the, these interviews I, I'm trying to do, I like to hear about your career, which yeah. is really phenomenal. But, you know, how are you going to deal with, you know, you know, being out of work, I guess, maybe do you get unemployment for something? Okay. like that? Yeah. Here's what's happening for this incredibly wonderful moment in time, even with all the craziness out there. Yeah. I'm collecting the pension. Oh, so uh, from the Federation and yeah. among Social Security. Oh, wow. So after a lifetime of, you know, working, you know, go to sleep at three, get up at seven to go to some gig in the morning, you know, take every gig possible, raising two daughters, whatever you have to do. Yeah. Right. Yeah, sure. I'm at this unbelievable juncture of I'm on the dole. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now, I, we all don't know what's going to happen with the pension fund. or We don't know what's going to happen. But the they already cut it. In, uh, they already know. cut it, but look what's going on out there. So, you know what I mean? It's they might cut it again or stop it. Who knows if... Well, who knows what's going to happen? You know what I mean? I think all bets are off. Even with the cut, because I worked on Broadway for so many years. How many, about how many years did you really play on Broadway? Um... Well, like I said, before 95, I was a dabbler. I was a subber. Yeah. Some of this, some of that, you know, but not really in that scene at all. I was a gig guy. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I would say from 95 until this past August. So what is that? Uh, 20 years, a good time. Yeah. And I mean, it's not like every year I had a show. I didn't, it's not like I was in The Lion King, but, uh, you know, there would be a year sometimes between shows or six months. Right. But it's been pretty amazingly consistent. That that right, would be so you're lucky you were a member of a, uh, of the union that helped uh, you know uh, help you build your pension. Absolutely. And then you turned the age. Of, did you take it early from the pension fund? No, I waited. You waited to sixty five. Yeah, sixty five. Yeah. Fortunately, I had enough gigs, so I kind of didn't really need it. Yeah. I was able to, and that was a never ending controversy for musicians. Take it now. Wait now. Wait. Yeah. yeah. So. I waited, and at 65, I took it. Great. And it's a very generous amount of money. Yeah. Um, and I'm very grateful, and I hope, you know, even with the cut, it's going to be okay. Yeah. So I hopefully, you know, at this point, you know, I hope they just plug it right now where it is. and. Right. So these other revenue streams that you were looking to get, say playing shows, you still play. It's always good to have a little extra cash. And of course, you as a player, your heart's into playing. Yeah. Whether you get paid a dollar or you get paid union scale, you're a player throughout. You know what I mean? So to, to play a show that, like you said, you're booked on this other show at the Playhouse. Now that it's canceled that you were expecting that extra income, you know, how, how is it affecting you mentally? That's a good question. You know, yeah, I, I think mental is the biggest part of it. You know, you'll you'll live, you'll pay your rent for the next X amount of time. Yeah, but mentally, you're in the house. You know, like the rest of us. So it's kind of cuckoo. So I've talked about this with a lot of people. This is a very unique situation, which I hope never comes back to humanity. But we're, I mean, there's nothing to measure this against. Where we're all shut down. You, me, Paul McCartney. Barbara Streisand. I'm glad we're in the same sentence. I like that. We're all sitting at home in our pajamas. You know what I'm saying? This is a crazy, you know, in other words, in, in before this, if you said, you know what, I just want to take some downtime. Well, the world is still racing by and in the back of your mind, because we're all predators being musicians. We're always trying to get the next gig. You know what I mean? Yeah. So the world is going by and you're stopping. You kind of freaked out, but we're all stopped. So, the first week of the shutdown, I was practicing like crazy. Then the second week, I said, you know what? Let me see what it's like to just do nothing. To chill a little bit. You know what? I, but I didn't, uh, I, I had trouble with that. Because maybe if I was in upstate New York and, you know, by waterfalls or something. But I'm kind of set up for business here in Manhattan. You know what I mean? Yeah. I live here to do yeah. go to gigs. So now I found that I really love music. And I just have an inquisitive nature. <laughs> and I'm just practicing like crazy. I don't know, you know, I'm not going to come out of this like Elvin Jones, you know what I mean? But I think I enjoy the act 
of learning things and playing music. I miss playing with people. Of course. But I'm finding like the more people I talk to now that we're kind of settling in, you can't kill creative people. They're like cockroaches. People are coming up with, you know, let's do this, let's do that. I'll send you a file. We'll do and that's why I'm talking to you. The it's concept like, of talking. I, I haven't it, talked to you in 20, 30 years. It's, man, it's amazing amongst the crowd that I travel with, which I think are kind of soulful, music loving people. You know what I mean? Yeah. Everybody just loves music, loves playing with it, tampering, learning. We're all like, uh, you know, yeshiva students. We just love to like learn, you know what I mean? It's like well, it's craziness. Well, you love to learn. Do, do you teach at all or that's not I a- I don't teach at all. I taught for six years at Bridgeport. Oh yeah. I'm the adjunct professor at Bridgeport. I haven't taught since then. Okay, so you don't have any online, so like you're not subsidizing anything by doing any online teaching? Well, at- I just got a $12 residual from BMI. Oh, excellent. From uh, library music that I wrote a long time ago. Excellent. Now you're in the royalty business. <laughs> I'm in the royalty business. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, I don't have any, there's no, at this point, it's manual labor. You know, if I don't go. Well, let me ask you a question. Doug. What about even um, putting things online? Because uh, you're an exceptional drummer. You Thank have you. an exceptional, uh, exceptional career before you and, uh, and we hope it all continues you know you're well known you're well respected you know people would love to see maybe you doing something online maybe during one of your practice sessions or or some techniques maybe maybe come up with you know like i'm doing this with you just to get an idea of what you do but maybe that would be a good idea you're not going to get an income really from it but you know that would help also creative get you some of your creative juices out of you know maybe in that way not performing in person but performing and you know sharing some of your your talents you know with younger musicians of course older but younger musicians that can learn so much from a seasoned guy like you a seasoned cat that really has so much to offer and now not being able to be in front of somebody you know that it might be an idea i'm just throwing an idea out it's a great idea and i'm going to take it to heart like i said i was just on the phone with a friend that's uh writing these arrangements and he had this idea to uh you know what a, what a creative studio kind of guys do in the, with the virus he wrote all these arrangements of Beatles songs and yeah wants to flush them out with real players as opposed to the computer what? so he's thinking of sending the files around and that's what i'm saying people are coming out of the, the roach trap to uh figure things out and that's a good idea i did contact this guy uh from uh, Brazil to take drum lessons and uh, for you to take drum lessons for me to take drum lessons. Uh, you need some lessons, man. Hopefully I uh, do need some lessons. Well, the, you know, the Brazilian yeah. beats man, are incredible. But what about you? Like I say, you, you do. So if they send you the tracks, how will you set up at home to record? You know, unfortunately I don't have, I, I just have V drums and logic. Right. I've done some of this stuff for some friends and, if you're careful and you know what you're doing, you can almost make magic with the V drums. You know, sure. being experienced, I know what not to play. You know, like when, you're, when you've been playing a long time, you know when you go on a gig and there's a rental set and there's one drum that doesn't sound good? Yeah. You know, the drum. Yeah, avoid it. You, you play things on the V drums that you know are going to sound good. Right. right? I mean, not too fast so it triggers properly. Yeah, so it just, it's smooth and... And, uh, you know, I was kind of amazed uh, when my, we did this with my friends. So there might be some of that. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's a good idea. I mean, just to keep you busy. These are all ideas. You know what? Uh, it's it, kind of crazy, man, but I'm driving myself nuts by myself. I'm running out of hours. Yeah. You know, I, I try to get out every day and ride a bike or walk because that makes me feel better. Of course. And, you know, I have this, I'm practicing things. Like I said, I'm not going to come out like Elvin Jones, but it's kind of fun learning. And it's, I'm kind of like uh, amazed at how I can keep myself busy. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I find that too. I'm up in the morning, uh, you know, the first couple of days, of course, you're not sure. And now I'm busy. I, 
busier than I've ever been. Because when I when we were in business, it was normal. I go out to the supermarket, I'll go get the mail. You know, you do this, you do that, and you come back work for two hours. Now I'm in the, uh, behind this computer thinking I have to keep working. <laughs> you know? I'm finding like a. It's like a childlike love again of music because my regular thing is probably like everybody we know is in the modern era, someone sends you PDFs and MP3s. Warren, here's the stuff for the gig next week and you spend countless hours at home learning the music. And then you go to maybe a rehearsal or just to sound check and piece it together. So there's always this constant learning of music that people send you, but there is no music to learn. You know what I mean? Yeah. So uh, it's crazy, man. It's a different, it's a different scene going on now. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, I think we, you know, uh, let, let's try to wrap this up. So yeah. two things. One thing, it, it sounds like mentally, as a primarily a performing musician, yeah. keeping your, your soul and your, your spirit together by even you know, at your age, you know, uh, you know, God bless you that you still, you know, have this gumption that, that you're still looking to educate yourself. So, you know, you're still looking to expand your horizons and get as much knowledge as you can. That's, I, don't know how, I don't know how people just stop. I don't, you know what I mean? It's, yeah. I, do, I, I don't know. Well, I don't see it now for me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, that's Maybe great. if I had some other crazy hobby like sailing or, you know what I mean? Yeah. But I, I always love music and I love, I, it's just, I mean, yesterday I was listening to Mel Lewis and going, how does he do that? You know, I'm like, I, I, I emailed my friend. I said, what do you think he's doing? You know, like this just insane inquisitive nature, you know what I mean? Yeah, incredible. So mentally, uh, I, I like that. So in, in a way to, to wrap it up, is yeah. mentally you're keeping yourself together by staying active, staying learning, still expanding your horizons in, in your own aspect. Absolutely. Right. And, and, and um, financially, what do, what do you see? How is this affecting you financially? Or well, because like I said, because right. I have pension and Social Security, I'm yeah. a big shot. Yeah. Is, I never could see this day coming. It was always, if this was happening 10 years ago, yeah. I would be hyperventilating. Yeah, right. I would be climbing through the screen to steal your glasses. You know what I mean? It's like, forget it. <laughs> and I would sell them in the black market. I mean, you know, come on. That's, uh, but this is, yeah, this is an incredible gift uh, from above to have these yeah. different kind of revenues. So what, what would be your like final, uh, say, recommendation or advice to maybe some younger players, younger students um, yeah. in, in the world, you know, coming from you? Uh, what would okay, be? here's what I would say. Find what you love to do, okay? And I know this sounds really like hippie California-ish, but find things you love to do, do them, and focus on what you want as opposed to what you don't want. Okay, try to ignore the daily narrative of how crazy it really is. Yeah. And just put those energies into the world you want. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, I don't know any other way to do it. I mean, other than that, if you just sit in front of the TV all day and like the relentless coronavirus stream of craziness, we're all pretty aware of what's going on. You know what I mean? But uh, I have this... Um, naive maybe fantasy that this will come to an end hopefully and the capitalists as they are will go completely insane doing business again because yeah. man the capitalists they love to make money more than john coltrane left to practice wow. so, uh, <laughs> you know what i mean sure well I if it wasn't for the capitalists none of us you know, would be in business. So, uh, right. so, you know, you can't say, I think it's positive. I mean, we are in a capitalistic uh, society and, you know, that, yeah, that, I mean, I'm, that's my fantasies. They're going to go start creating business again. Right. And, and I, my fantasy is that we're going to be seeing the news and it's going to go, Oh my God, the stock market is just, Oh my, it's just screaming. Today was better than yesterday. And yesterday was better than the day before. That's my fantasy. Uh, hopefully this virus will subside and we'll uh, look back at this. I don't think we're ever going to be the same. It's like 911, you know, it's kind of, you know, it's like a car accident. It kind of like, it's always in your mind, you know, in the back of your mind, but 
it's uh, most people I talk to feel you know that there, there's some introspection to come out of this. Yeah, yeah. But if uh, that's my advice to younger people, find what you love, and really do it with a passion, and picture the world you want to be in a year or now. Oh, man, that's beautiful. Yeah, man. That's great. Warren O's uh, New York City drummer. Um, you know, we really appreciate your insight and letting us into a little bit of, about your world and how you made it from then till now and, and good words of wisdom. Warren, that's beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank Sorry. you. Thank you.